Hey YouTube. <clears throat> so it's Monday morning and you can see I'm seriously set up to do some woodwork here in the house and um, I'm working on molding and I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying this very much. Uh, all of my life I've had to you know be in a big freaking hurry because I was working for someone else and you know I had to hurry up and do this and hurry up and do that so that I could make money and now being retired I don't have to make money and the nice thing about that is that I can take my time with every little thing nothing's on my mind other than doing what I'm doing and maybe my wife sometimes she is most of the time I guess I better watch what I say here but anyway um, so I'm gonna be you see on the table over there there's a, another window sill so I need to router the edge of that and uh, then I'm gonna start to trim out another window. So the window I'll be trimming out then is this one this morning. I'm working on that. And you'll I'll be making videos as I go through the house here. The most enjoyable thing about this is that I own it. I have no mortgage on this at all. And you know it's a pretty big house. It's come out really nice. A lot of good things going on here with this place. And uh, just thought I'd share that with you. But not having a mortgage on it is one of the most, most, um, or the best thing about working on the. So once you get the sill <coughs> cut out to fit around the window and stuff, and I want the sill to extend in not only away from the window, this is a seven and a half inch wide board, which makes a nice window sill. But then I want this to extend past the casing for the look that I'm trying to achieve. Now, this is not by any means the fastest way, but it certainly is an enjoyable way. I use a file then to file off all of the little burrs and things. And I do it very slowly because I'm enjoying myself. You know, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could grab power tools, all the power tools you want, but there's just something about being able to do this and shape these things the way exact the way you want them and not have the pressure of having to perform for somebody else and do the little song and dance that you have to do when you're trying to make a buck to pay for you know everything else that comes down the pike. So I'm going to be filing the edges of this making this really nice and then I'm going to nail it down and fit it to where he wants on the sill. So guys, there's a number of ways to um, make a window so This is the way I like doing it. I just like the look of this. But what I want to say here is that um, when you're putting wood together, you want to just take your time with it and make it right. Now you can see there's a little bit of a gap here along the whole window and it's pretty much even. The reason that that gap is there is because if you look down in there, there's a bead of clear rubber caulking in there to help seal around the windows. Um, the rest of it has great stuff around it. So I'm not going to be packing any insulation between the extension jams and the wood because I've already got some seal there. Yes, it might help, but I'm not worried about it. The house has to breathe a little as well. But anyway, getting back to this rubber, because it's holding the sill from going in, what I'm going to do is take a block plane, and on this very edge down here, I'm going to just and put a bevel across that so that I can get this to fit nice and tight in there. And then this way here I'll be nailing it in the back in such a way that when the wood swells or shrinks up, and it will, it can do it away from the sill and still stay, uh, stay tight. I mean it can do it away from the window and still stay tight against the window. So I planed that edge and you can see there that the wood is nice and tight against the window. So I'll show you what that edge looks like. It's actually planed. You can see, I think you can probably see it this way a little bit better. This corner has been chamfered off with a block plane. And that's what I'm going to do uh, every time I come up against that kind of a problem. Now the other thing I'd like to say to you, especially if you're new at this and you're going to attempt to do molding for the first time. Um, when you're in a house that's been drywalled, a lot of times the drywaller 
Um, they're not real particular about being perfect in line with the frame, and rightly so because sometimes the frame is off, so it all depends on you know how good everything is. But you want to make sure that you clear the drywall out of the way. You can do it a number of ways. I have this old uh, chisel, it's sharp, but I just use it for stuff like this. You can use a chisel to cut the drywall. You can use the old standby, which would be a utility knife, to cut the drywall. Okay, and then take it off. And sometimes, if it's not real bad, I'll just take the edge of my hammer and use that to shave the drywall. And that works out pretty nice. And then you want to clean that up so that you can put the wood down and get an accurate um, representation of how well it's fitting. So, um, when I put the window sill down then, and I push it back all the way, uh, so one of the things that you want with a window sill is when something's put on the window sill, it should stay there. So you can do this a number of ways. You can use a level, and this shows it needs to go up a little bit in the front. Or, if the windows are right, and usually the windows are, you can put a, this shows the same thing, this has to come up just a hair in the front here. So what I'll do is I'll use some shims. Now I have some shim stock here, but it's too thick, so I gotta get some thin stuff. This would be a good one. And what you do is you put that in there until the window sill is where you want it to be. So again, in the modern age, there was a time when water used to run down windows because of condensation, and if you have that, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do with that to control it, but the window should be flat. I was going to say that we used to want the, wind, the water to come down and come off the sill, so it didn't lay there, but I won't even get into that. So right now, all I'm saying is you want the window to be flat. So you can use a square, putting a square along the edge of the window, the flat part, make sure nothing's bothering it, and then see just how much it has to come up. This only has to come up here in the front a very little. It could be that the board has a little bit of a, um, a cup to it. If, if it does, it's not much because, you know, I'm laying on there and it looks really flat to me, but nonetheless, you know, it might show up or something that you were not seeing. So, we're going to make sure that this window sill is level and that it's in the middle of the opening. So in other words, whatever gap I have here, and you want a little bit of a gap, you also want over in here. But you don't want the gap to be so big that when you put your trim on, it doesn't hide the sill uh, opening. Now if you want to at this point, you can put some uh, insulation in there. I don't bother with that because I have it in here and the house is insulated heavily on the outside. But anyway, if you want to uh, put insulation in there, you could, or some caulking, but really it's just a waste of time in my opinion. Okay, so now the window sill we know is sitting there, fitting good, it fits against the window. I want to just get some shims and shim that up a little bit. So what I do then is I have shims, and they don't have to be under the whole window, but I have shims in here, and what I've done is push the shim, and just so you know what I'm talking about, a shim is it's tapered wood, just so that this square fits in there nicely, and it does. It's a nice little fit, okay? Maybe I can bring this out of here, but other than that, it's good on both sides. Nice square fit. So that the window is level, or the window sill is pretty much level. So I can check that if I use my level, and I'm right on the money there, so I'm going to leave that go, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil, and underneath the sill, right here, I want to mark this with a pencil, because I want to cut these shims off, okay, and then I'm going to put them back, pull them out, cut them, and put them back in there. Now, a shim is very thin, so you don't really have to go to the saw, but you can. You can go to the saw, cut them off, and bring them back. Just remember which one is which. You can mark them if you want to. Okay, so the shims are cut, and they're put back into place where they were. So I have no rocking of the windowsill. So I'm going to 
say that that sill is good. Again, make sure you're centered there with that. And then I'm going to nail that in place. Now you can use a, a portable drill. I got used to using this. This is a push drill. And the reason I got used to this is because we didn't have battery operated drills back in the day that were worth anything. Because they would always go dead. So I just use this to get my nail started on both sides. And what I want to do is put the nail over far enough that the extension gems are going to hide the nail if I can. And that I can drill the, or I can uh, drive the nail in. So you want to put on a little bit of an angle. It'll help to hold the board and it'll keep the uh, uh, sill in place. Guys, besides the obvious that you want the window sill to be level, one of the reasons why you want it level, besides the fact you don't want stuff rolling off of it, is that when you go to put the board, now, when you go to put the big board along here, the extension jam, you want to be able to lay flat on this. If you cut this in such a way that you can make a straight cut, but the window sill is leaning, when you nail the jam in there, you're going to have to readjust or do something or cut a crooked cut to make that fit here. So making this window sill level with the window and you know perpendicular to the window is actually making my job a whole lot easier. Okay, so the window sill is nailed down. Now if you remember I made this bench, oh man, I must have made it three or four months ago, maybe longer. This is why I made it for this application. It's a nice and wide bench. I think that thing's like wider than a foot. It is a foot. It's 12 inches wide. Um, it's about three foot long. And I, it's nice and sturdy. So I can stand on that to do this, the uh, work that I'm going to do with the extension jam up here, especially on the top. <clears throat> All right, so what you want to do then to get the measurement for these boards here, is you want to put a straight edge along the wall, okay, and get a measurement from the window to the very edge of the straight edge. Now I've got, um, let's see here, I've got five and three eighths, uh, let's see, that would be six sixteenths, seven sixteenths, so five and seven sixteenths. And you want to check that, you know, in, in at least three places, top, bottom, and sides. Right, that's about five sixteenths up there. And the reason that there's different measurements at times, okay, the reason there's different measurements is because if the framing lumber was put together, <clears throat> if the two by fours and the framers are working are not put exactly together. Okay, and, and even on this you can see that this board is slightly wider than the front board. What happens is you make the wall thicker and therefore the drywall is sticking out further. So uh, if the header area is wider, it could be because they don't have the header boards nailed together evenly with the boards that run flat. Okay, so either way it's already done, it's already there, there's no sense in talking about the framework. Let's talk about how we can adjust to that. So what I do is I take the biggest measurement, in other words the widest board, and that's what I'll start cutting with, and then from there, from there, I am going to um, very simply, five and a half, I'm going to cut five and a half inches. I can very simply um, either sand it down or I can run my block plan over it to get it to where I need it to be. But if the, if the board coming out here, the extension jam, if that board is nice and straight and flat <coughs> with the drywall, it makes putting the molding on a lot easier. Now sometimes with drywall, depending upon how big the window is, you may end up where there's a seam. And no matter who does drywall, it's never perfectly flat. There's always some variation to it, even in the sheet itself. 
So you want to be able to take your time and allow for that variation. It's not going to be perfection, but it's going to be darn good and darn close. So let me go cut those cords. Okay guys, so <clears throat> I have a straight edge here. Okay, and you got to make sure you do have a straight edge. One of the ways to get a straight edge is on the shim is to take and run your block plane over it. But either way, this is straight. And what I do is I drive a little finishing nail, or actually it's an 8-penny finishing nail, on an angle downhill so that the edge of it doesn't scratch my board, especially if I've already had a finished board. Now I'm going to be putting more polyurethane on these, but for right now, if you look here, you can see that the nail is going to be below that. Now I need the nail there to help me hold this board up until I decide where I want this. Now let me just explain to you why I can't nail this straight up. <clears throat> the board is against the wood on the top, but it's against the frame header. But if you look over on this side, and I don't know if you can see it, there's a slight, it's, it's, I don't see any kind of a gap in the window. But when I come down this way further, I'm looking and seeing this little indention in this window as I come down. So what I want to do is I can level this up with a level. I can use the level to level this and get an idea of what's happening. So right now this has to come down a little bit on this side, okay, which, you know, would make sense. So it has to come down on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take shims again and I'm going to put them in there. But when I put the shims in this time, I'm going to use shims that are the same length from the thin end going in different directions. In other words, this is a thin end, this is a thicker end. I'm going to put them two together. I'm going to push them in there, and that's going to make a flat surface for me. Okay? A flat surface. You can do it with a level. It doesn't matter how you do it, just so you get the flat surface. But what, I, what my concern is here is to not see <clears throat> the little bit of a indention that these windows have. Why, the, why it's there, I don't know, but it has it. So what I've been trying to do is keep three-eighths of an inch revealed along the window. <clears throat> now, that, it's up to you what you want. But, so what I'll do is I'll measure three-eighths of an inch up. One, two, three. Three-eighths. Put a little tick mark there. So that I can get this thing to be basically square with the window. See the problem here is if the window's not square, you're going to end up if the window's not square or racked properly what as they call it, it's possible that um, you're gonna have to adjust the the woodwork to actually not be Square. Now, doing that means that you're going to this reveal is going to appear to run out on either end. So <clears throat> I don't want that. I want the reveal to be the same. I would rather have the reveal on the window look even than to have that look crooked. Because even if the molding is dead level, if the reveal looks crooked, the molding is going to look crooked. Okay. So you want to actually follow this because the molding they won't, you won't see as being crooked if the reveal is the same along there. Alright, so basically then I get a measurement from the wood down to that. I have an inch and a quarter. My board is only three quarters, so I need a half of an inch of shim. So I'm going to need some thicker shims and I'm going to just put them in here. Now the other thing you can do to help yourself out a little bit is you can put another nail up here or even two nails to hold this. So if I come down there an inch and a quarter and I put two nails in there, one like that and then one in a little bit further, that'll hold the board up there for me while I fool around putting the shims in, trying to figure out which shim is going to work for this. <coughs> okay. So that holds the board up there for me. And if you look, I've got about 3 8 there. This is a little low. I can bend that nail up a little bit. And now I pretty much have my 3 8 a little more area. Yeah, I'm looking pretty good there. A little high in the middle, but my shim in the middle will take care of that. So you want to make sure that's in all the way. And before you do any shimming, though, hold a piece of wood against this and make sure that you've cut it 
the right dimension. Now at this end here, it's flush with the drywall, okay, and it's in all the way, but at this end it's not, it's slightly out. So I need to plane the edge it out a little bit. So from right here, I usually put an arrow showing me where I have to go, from here to this end, and I'll put a scribe on there, or, or not a scribe, but a little squiggly line, so that I can plane that line off, and that'll make me flush with the drywall. It's not a matter of making straight cuts all the time. It's a matter of making the trim set the house off by saying everything looks good. That's what you're after. Good looks. You don't really have, it doesn't have to be perfectly well or perfectly square as long as it looks good. And there's a trick to how you do that. Okay guys, so if you look at this, if I take my straight edge, I, I plane this down from about this point down to the end. So if I hold my straight edge in there, I can see that the molding, the molding is about two and a quarter inches wide. I'm hitting the drywall at that point and I'm hitting the face of this wood. So it's straight there, it's flush. That's what I wanted. Now at the same time, I also put shims uh, in three places at the two ends and one in the middle. I'll be putting at least one nail in here. Now you can put two, but I'm going to put at least one in to start off with. What I like to do is to put one nail in the middle and I have it shimmed so that I have my reveal evenly along here. I'll put one nail in the middle and what that does, it allows me to move this board if I have to to make it be flush with the uh, side boards that I'm going to be putting on. The reason for that is because sometimes, like I say, these boards may cup. And it could cut, you could have a flat board and cut a piece off of it like I did off of this and it could release stress and make the board cut. I cannot throw every board away that comes down the pike. I have to be able to use them. So knowing how to use them and how to straighten them is what, what this is all about when it comes to trim work. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to put a nail in the middle here. I'm going to cut the side boards to length and I have uh, the shims already in here. Now I can push up on these nails a little bit to help hold the board where it's supposed to be. Alright, now what I do want to do though is hold that up and then get a measurement, an accurate measurement down to the window sill. And I'll probably cut that about a sixteenth or less longer than what it calls for so that I can push up on this header part of the sill. guys so I have the sideboard there cut and I just had it pushed into place. Now if you look on this side here you'll see that there was a gap there in the middle right in here where I'm pointing and I closed that gap with a shim. So let me show you on this side there's a gap over here. Now this gap is very very thin however you can close that by in two ways. You can nail down through here on an angle, okay, and catch this board and pull this down. Or you can also shim this up here a little heavier to make this board come down, all right, right here. So I think I might have missed that with the camera. You can either nail it here to pull this board tight, or you can put shims in it to bring the board down tight. Either way, um, is doesn't matter as long as you're getting a nice tight thing. You see how it's tight there? but it comes away a little bit. That's what I'm talking about here. So we want to correct that. <clears throat> this is a nice board here. I had just cut, just below this there was a knot there. You can see this nice looking cathedral grain there. Really nice looking boards that came from my yard. <laughs> now something like this where there's a little bit of a hole there, I love that thing, so I'm going to take some uh, wood filler and I'll stain it the same color as this or if it's natural color I can get, I can just go ahead and fill that in, sand it off a little bit and I can fix that up and make that look pretty nice. And that's what I'm going to do with this stuff. Alright, so <clears throat> I need to nail this last board in and finish shimming it. And guys, another way to go about doing this, sometimes it's difficult to hold the shims like I have a technique that I use to hold them and um, I'll have to show that to you but anybody can do it. You can see there's shims here 
here and then down at the bottom there to hold the board nice and plumb. Now, um, or at least straight with the window, okay? Straight with the edge of the window right here is more important than plumb once you're at this stage. There's no going back and fixing that window. I'm not tearing this siding off just to fix a window, okay? So if the window's not perfect, go with the trim of the window or the edge of the window for your reveal and try to keep your reveal even. All right, so now here on this side, I'm not done nailing that, so the reveal's slightly high at the top here than it is at the bottom, which I have to adjust that. But um, another way you can do this is you can actually take shims and a level. <clears throat> if you get yourself a three-foot level, that would be perfect for this size window here. You can hold the level, put shims, and you know shim to the level in a, a plumb level, and put the shims in place, cut them off, and then just nail the boards up. You can do that also. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. I'm doing this because I'm having so much fun. It ain't even funny. I just love doing this. But uh, the thing is, is you can put the shims, three shims first, all the way around the window. You can put the shims in the corners and then in the middle and use a level to level them up. And then <clears throat> in most cases, you can just put the boards in place. Another thing you can do, if uh, depending upon the silt type and how wide the depth of it is, you can take this whole frame and nail it together at the top, bring the boards in on the bottom a little, you know, with the stress of the nail, to just be able to get it in place and then spread them out and shim that whole thing. <clears throat> There's a number of different ways to do it. Any way is right as long as when it's finished it's nice and tight and looks good. So, if you're going to tell me about the different ways that you do it in the comments, uh, leave good comments and we can all enjoy them. If you're going to say I don't do it like this or someone doesn't know what they're doing, namely me, I'm going to just delete your comment because I've been doing this for 48 years and I've made a whole ton of money building houses. So I don't want to hear that, but I will listen to how you do it because that's better. So use the right terminology so we can all enjoy the comment. Oh guys, uh, hey guys, one of the other things that I didn't say, but the other day when I put this window up, I did it. I didn't do it today because my um, I was actually talking to my wife out through the window earlier. And here's the thing, you should never put trim around the window without the window locked. Alright, the window should be closed and the window should be locked. This way here... The wind, that locking of the window sometimes helps to wrap the window in place. Now, I don't have a problem here, you can see that, but you really should have, it, have the window shut and locked. It's important to lock it. And then, go ahead and do your trim work. I should have said that from the start. Of course, with these vinyl windows, you get a little bit of a uh, break with them. They're not quite as bad as what wood windows can be. They don't move around as... They, they move, but they don't move around as much. So guys, while I'm at this, let me explain shims to you. Shims come in a pack. Um, what we used to buy when I was younger and I was working, I actually like cedar shims better. The reason I like cedar is because cedar cuts with a knife, unless there's a knot in it, a lot easier than, than these do. I'm not even sure what kind of wood this is. It must be from overseas because it doesn't even burn. But the point is, is that white pine is the next uh, one I would use. I like white pine because they're pretty much harder than these things are. But they can get knotty. And if you have knots, it's very hard to cut the shim off at the window edge and with a knife. But usually I go cut them on the saw anyway. And I, that's what, how I do it. But what I want to tell you about shims is this. When you take the shim, there's a wide end and a narrow end. Okay, you have that on both shims. Now, a good shim pack that's cut, shims are cut in such a way that if you're three and a half inches for a doorway, they're assuming, or for, I mean, a two by four wall, they're assuming that there's no gap bigger than a half of an inch, okay? Now, you gotta use shims in two sets of twos. If you have a bigger gap than that, you're gonna have to put four shims, because if you don't, when you take and you add another shim to this, you make a bevel rather than a straight piece. 
So shims are used so that when you pull them apart or push them together, like you'll see in the middle there, it gets thinner and thinner and thicker and thicker, depending upon how you look at it, until you have what you need. So shims are made like, you know, cut like that to be able to push back and forth, cut it off or whatever, and do what you have to do to get the thickness you need to shim up the board that you're trying to shim, like in this window over here, okay, along the window edge. But sometimes these shims are not big enough. If you're working in an old house, sometimes you have to have more than this. So then instead of using shims, what you want to do is use shakes. So they have window shakes, and again, cedar is the easiest to cut. Now here's what I'm talking about when I say cutting these. Like for instance, there's shims inside this window. Now let's just say, and these should go in, you know, reverse of one another. I'm just going to stick them in like this for a second. Let's say that shim is nailed in place there. Okay, I want to break that off of there or cut it off. Now there's a number of ways of doing that. First of all, you can cut from this side. And if you do, your knuckles and your hand is going to leave marks on the paint. Now look, this place was just painted not long ago, and the paint is perfect on it as far as um, no marks anywhere. So we don't want to mark the paint up because then somebody has to come back and either wipe it off or repaint it or something. And we don't want to have to do that. So we don't touch the paint. We consider this paint wet, so we never touch it if we can help it. Okay? So don't cut from this side because you're going to put your fingers against to guide you and mark the paint. What you want to do is cut from this side because when you cut from this side, you're going to cut on an angle like this. You're going to cut the shims. And then it's, you're not going to be on the wood if this was something other than wood that you could stain like white, either white wood or you know something else that's white that will stain easy. You want to keep your hands clean if you can possibly, but even touching your tools puts metallic on them, so you've got to be careful. But anyway, what you want to do is come in at an angle, stay right against this board, and cut, and cut a bunch of cuts, a bunch of knife cuts. Don't try and break them off. You, you could easily take a hammer and take and smack them, and they'll break there. The only thing is, is you're going to be, end up pulling the window uh, extension out of whack, and that's not how you do things, okay? You want to do this so that you don't break what you've already fixed. So you just score it, score it, score it, score it until it breaks. If you have a really sharp knife, it might only take one. If it's real thin, it'll only take one. When you get out here and it's a little bit thicker, sometimes it takes a little bit more scoring. And usually that's why I cut them, cut them on the uh, saw. So in other words, if I had two pieces in here and I had it to snug, I'll just mark that with a pencil, go back over to the saw and cut it right in front of the pencil towards where I'm saving because that way I won't um, uh, have anything sticking out. So a little tip on using shims. Also guys, also guys, there's an exception to every rule and here's one of the things. Sometimes the board, the framing member is crooked, okay, it's rounded, sometimes it's cut. Sometimes it just is cut on a bevel, and that's from the sawmill. And not just my sawmill, I'm talking about any sawmill. So even though shims are made to work opposing bevels, it does not mean that you don't put them in the same way. It's not a rule, it's the way that they were designed to work. However, you sometimes, if, if the board is touching, like let's say this board was touching back there, and the framing member's in there crooked. There's no way you're going to straighten that framing member out. So just take, now sometimes you can straighten them out ahead of time if you look at it by hitting them with a hammer hard, but that's not really recommended. But you can still take two shims if you have to, like you see that's loose in there. You can still pull it out a little, make sure there's enough shim in there to nail to, and then put another shim in exactly the same direction that is. So there's not, anybody who tells you that it has to be written in stone, is probably not knowing what they're talking about. They may be young at it or new to it. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but once you've done enough of it, you'll know what to do with the shims. I'm just trying to give the beginners or someone an example of how you can use wood shims. Okay guys, so you can see that I have the trim around the window. I have to put a piece on the bottom here yet. <coughs> um, I'll just give you a little hints about uh, how to treat 
and I don't mean treat like put something on it, but how to take care of the molding when you're cutting it. What I want to show you here, this piece of molding, the edge up on the top here, let me get over in the light, maybe we can see better. Yeah. <clears throat> this piece of molding on this edge was cut with the molding laying flat in the miter saw. Okay? So you can see there's burrs on the top, there's burrs on the back. Now the ones on the back doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just file the edge of that back and knock them off of there and uh, that'll be fine. But when you're, when you're uh, taking the burrs off the top, if you file this direction, uh, if you file this this direction towards me, you're going to pull them strings off of this. So what you want to do is run your finger over the top of that first of all, and then file that direction. Okay, what that does is gives you a nice straight finish line there without any mistakes on it or any fiber tears. Alright, the back it doesn't matter. You can go back and forth with the back. But the finished edges you want to go towards the finished edges you want to go towards let me let me repeat this because I think I was out of the camera frame. You, the back doesn't matter what, what you do there, just get the burrs off of it. Okay? But on the finished sides, you want to take and and file towards the unfinished cut, okay, to get the burrs off. Alright, so that's that one. Now I dropped one, but let me pick this up here. So now this piece was cut standing up in the miter saw. Now if you look, there's no burrs down at the bottom, the face, or the top. Okay, so that's actually a better way to cut this molding, and that's why, depending upon how you put it in there, it depends on the grain of the wood how it's going to act. So on this board, all we basically got to do is just knock this, these burrs off of here. And like I say, on the back, it doesn't matter what you do. But you want to get in the habit of going towards the cut, uh, cleaning it up towards the cut, because what that will do is take the burrs off and give you a nice straight edge there to work with. But what I was trying to show you with this other piece, now that's a different cut. With this other piece is when you have burrs on the finished edge, you want to file it in the... When you have burrs on the finished edge... I almost have this camera too high. When you have burrs on the finished edge, you want to file them towards the cut end of the wood. Okay, this direction, that direction, this direction. In order to get the burrs off. Otherwise, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so here's the problem. Now, I made a cut with this laying flat in the miter saw. So there's, there's no burrs on this edge or in the face, which is good, but look at the burrs in the back there. Now, if the wood's not been polyurethaned, if the wood's not been polyurethaned, you'll find out that you're going to have all kinds of, of uh, pieces of fiber coming out of your molding, and it's going to look like heck when you, you know, start to look at it nice. It's going to absorb stain in a different way, too. So what you want to do is you want to file that towards the cut and you'll end up with a fairly nice straight edge. Now if you look really close at that you can still see there's a couple marks there from cutting it. But with the polyurethane on, like I say, it actually cuts a little bit better because the polyurethane helps to hold those fibers in there. So you get a nice clean cut then. So then guys, the piece of wood that goes underneath the windowsill, I'm using base molding. Okay, that's the profile of it. Now normally this base goes like this on the, along the wall. So in other words, like that far wall that's beyond me there, the base is going to go like that. Now, I want some of these imperfections. I, I want to be able to see them. And I'll be able to fix this with, with uh, yeah, body putty, with um, wood filler. So uh, I'm not worried about these. I want to see the variations in the wood. Now, here's the thing. I'm cutting this, and I'm going to nail this up underneath my windowsill just the way you see this with this square cut here. What I want to show you, though, is there's another way you can cut this where you can put, like, let's say this is the window. That would be the sill, and you can put this piece underneath here to be able to make it look like it returns against the sill. I don't like this. For my application, although I do this, I just don't want it now. So I'll show you what that's going to look like when I cut. Okay, so what you're looking at here is this, 
and I'm not asking opinions here, I'm just showing you something. This is how I'm going to end my board that's underneath the window sill. This is how you can end it, okay? What you can do is you can um, run this board underneath it and then put these pieces in here to make it look like it's a return, like it's going somewhere. I don't like that on a windowsill because I want the bottom of the windowsill to look like it's the return that I'm trying to get. So I'm just going to nail this up here flat. That's all I'm going to do. And it's in line with the edges of the casing. So it gets nailed under there this way. This isn't hard to nail. All you got to do is take this, push it against the windowsill, basically drill two, four, six holes, and then just nail it up and set the nails. So um, that'll be the end of this video, guys. Um, I'm sorry for the lighting if the lighting isn't the best, but I'm inside the house. It's overcast and there's no power to the house yet. I'm using a generator and I can see around the windows to nail. So fine for my the work I'm doing. So anyway, guys, I'll be putting that underneath there and then I will be polyurethane that later. I would have liked to have done it ahead of time, but the way the time factor worked for me didn't happen. Have a good one, guys. Leave your comments in the bottom.